Hello YouTube and welcome back to my playthrough of Ace Attorney. Let's continue from where we left off. So right where that trial um uh was getting pretty crazy. Well, I understand you are the judicial assistant to the defense, but why this sudden ingress into my courtroom? Ha, a judicial assistant, and a woman no less. The rules state that females are not permitted into this court of law other than to testify. Yes, I fully understand. I ask only for five minutes of time. I have some vital evidence that I must hand over to the defense. Ha, you're too late, little girl. This trial has already been concluded. Five minutes. I will not allow a moment more. But, Your Excellency, I am most grateful. Um, who exactly are you? I'm sorry, there's no time. Please simply accept this for now. What is it? A report about something? Written in English. It's Jezeel Brett's research. The English woman's? After the trial resumed earlier, I hurried back to the university. I went to Dr. Wilson's laboratory in the medical faculty and borrowed this paper. Oh yes, that's right. Miss Brett was studying under the professor, wasn't she? So does this research, whatever it is, have something to do with the case? I'm afraid I don't know. I haven't been able to listen to the proceedings of the trial my myself. Oh, no, of course not. Special characteristics of cure rare and its effects on human subjects. Interesting. Cure rare, what's that? I've never heard of that word before. Time's up. The prosecution demands the immediate removal of this female trespasser from the courtroom. There was too little time for me to read it in detail, but I've summarized what I could on a note just inside the cover. If you think it could be valuable, please cast your eye over it. This is wonderful. Thank you. A report detailing an unknown poison that Miss Brett had been researching during her time at Yume University. Goodbye then, and good luck. You have had long enough, Council. We cannot detain our English guest any longer. I ask the prosecution and the defense now one last time. Does either side have any further evidence to present to the court? I presume not, but... The prosecution has made its case convincingly enough already. Nothing more to add to your excellency. Ryan Asuke, we're out of options here. This really is our very last chance. Yes, I know. Your excellency, the defense does have new evidence. Hmm, that look. The unyielding stare of a true Japanese warrior. Well, Miss Brett? Yes, your excellency? If you wouldn't mind, perhaps you could grace us with your presence a little longer. It's a delightful invitation, but I'm afraid. It's not so very long until tea time. I'll have to politely decline. Forgive me, Miss Brett. It seems I wasn't clear. I realize it was phrased as a question. However, I must ask you to treat that as an order. Good judge now. I've said it many times before, but the Japanese language makes no sense. My apologies, dear lady. So, counsel. What is this new evidence that demands the court's attention? This. Yes! Miss Jezeel Brett, we understand you were studying under Dr. Wilson at Yumei University, doing research. Research, by sheer coincidence perhaps, into a deadly poison. What? Poison? Where are you going with this, Council? A toxin known as Curare, Your Excellency. Is that a real toxin? I don't know. Somebody in the comments let me know. Even the slightest amount of this deadly poison entering the body leads to instant death. Attention! What? What complete and other nonsense? Curare, you say? I've never even heard of it, because it's not from here. You wouldn't have, have done. What do you mean? I mean that you wouldn't have heard of Curare before, for one very simple reason. It's a foreign. Exactly. That's why when they tested for all the different uh, substances, they only tested substances that are known to the Japanese. It doesn't exist. Correct. Which means... 
no matter what test the police can do for toxins, they never identify Cure Rare. Why? Because there is no test available here that can identify the presence of this highly deadly poison. What? Now she's done. Order, order, order. Council, does this deadly poison truly exist? According to this report authorized by the visiting research student from England, Curare has long been used by the tribes people of South America, a poison to lace their arrows. It seems that this is it's reasonably well known among European doctors and scientists. To lace their arrows. The report states that it is produced from the extract of a tree that goes deep in the Amazonian jungle, and it was first brought back to Europe at the turn of the century by explorers. It claims that animals shot by arrows laced with curare suffer instant death. Doesn't that about sum it up, Miss Brett? Not saying anything. Trumpery. These aspersions are other trumpery. To start with, if the victim had been administered some of this so-called deadly poison, he would have been squirming and writhing in pain, and the other diners would have surely noticed. No, like they said, it's instant death. Hmm, that's true. What do you say to that, Inspector? Obviously, I would have noticed a disturbance like that. Hmm, I don't remember anything like that either. I didn't notice the professor being in any kind of pain. According to this, however, it's the other way around. What do you mean, the other way around? The very fact that the victim didn't show any visible signs of distress is evidence that the curare was used. Explain yourself, counsel. The moment that the toxin enters a person's system, it causes instant paralysis. In other words, afflicted victims lose all strength and are completely unable to move. Even if they were in total agony, there will be no visible signs of pain at all. How terrible. Obviously, if a man lost all strength in his muscles, he'd collapse on the floor. But within a chair under him for support, as Dr. Wilson did, the effects could go largely unnoticed. But I don't follow, Kazuma. That's just paralysis. I thought the poison caused instant death. The full explanation is extremely unpleasant. The poison causes immediate paralysis, as I said, leaving the victim unable to move. But after a short time, the paralysis is so severe, it causes the muscles that control respir respiration to fail. Respiration, breathing. In other words, the actual cause of death is suffocation. And all the while, the victim is conscious and aware, just unable to move. That's hideous. To the observer, it wouldn't look almost like the victim was sleeping peacefully into an endless sleep. But for the victim himself, his final moments would be a living hell. That is the true nature of this deadly curare poison. And you're suggesting that this bottle, Council, actually contains this terrifying poison. This is all very convenient, isn't it? A hetero unknown poison for which there is no means of testing. What a happy tale for the defense. I wonder if they're going to go with the other Ace Attorney games, because in the other Ace Attorney games when there was poison and the prosecutor doubted it, you told the prosecutor, why don't you drink it to test it? So why don't you drink it to test it? Ahem. Why doesn't she drink it? Test it. All these facts, you think you're so clever, but you must be taught some manner. It is you who must be taught. Of course. Dear lady. So, this is how you Japanese behave, is it? What? You steal another honest hard work and then announce the results as if you discovered them. It's a pale, I'm a paled. What a loathsome act. Well, Miss Brett, the feeling is mutual. Whatever do you mean? Capitalizing on the unfortunate circumstances of an innocent man to frame him for a heinous crime. That really is a lo loathsome act. Wouldn't you agree? Enough of this. I for one refuse to accept it. The idea of some poison that doesn't even exist in the great empire of Japan is, is breaking the rules. Ha 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 ha. What's so funny? Oh, excuse me, Your Excellency. Yes, Miss Brett? May I borrow that bottle for a moment, please? Um, well, 
Yes, I don't see, um, why not? She's gonna drink it. The poison has disappeared at this point. The poison might have been just in the glass. Sorry. To an English woman such as myself, the whole affair is a farcial comedy. Your little police games and these foolish courtroom antics is laughable, really. But I'm getting bored of it all now. It's time for the games to end. Cheers. What are you doing? Hmm. No sparkle left at all. How appropriate for this shabby affair. The poison must disappear after some time, because some poisons, they lose their power after some time and they become worthless. Or, be, or less deadly, I should say. That's probably what happened. Curera probably loses its effectiveness after some time, and that's why she was confident in drinking it. Goodness. Whatever is the matter, you all look quite stunned. Now, this is just, you know, unacceptable. You know, they wouldn't let her drink that, like, evidence like that in the courtroom. This would never happen. The bottle was clean. Is that what you're saying? Ha 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 ha. You look quite incredulous, um, little boy. But of course, that's the simple truth. Thank you for presenting the findings of my research so concisely here in this grand venue. Most kind. It was... It... There's, there's only one of two possible explanations here. She's guilty, she poisoned him 100%, I know that. It's either A, the poison loses its power over time, that's what could have happened, and so she was confident in drinking it, or B, it wasn't the bottle that was poisoned, it was instead the glass. That's what it might be. Remember, she took the glass in her purse. Okay, let's... I should like to be excused now, please. No, you're not being excused. I think I've given fair enough of my time for the furthermore of friendship between our countries. Ah, yes, dear lady. We are most gratified of all the assistance you have given. This doesn't make sense. There had to have been poison in that bottle. So how... how did she... How did she swallow a whole glass and live to tell the tale? I don't understand it. Well, I suppose it's nothing else. This little Far Eastern charade. will make for interesting conversation the next party I attend in London. There, there has to have been some poison in that bottle. Doesn't there? But there can't have been, because otherwise she would have kneeled over dead. Come on, Ryan, it's okay. We have all the clues now. That bottle of water... It's in the glass, probably. Poison made from bark of certain trees in the jungle South America. The hunters of this region have used it since ancient times to castigate their prey. Instant paralysis of the entire body and subsequent death, even in minute do doses. The above-mentioned effect occurs when the poison enters the body, such as that by a blowpipe dart. Due to its ability to render a human body paralytic, it's believed the toxin could have applications anesthetic. Have a solution for the respiratory arrest caused as a result of the full body perilous must be found first, or patients would die of suffocation. It's the glass. The bottle contains no poison. It's the glass. As I thought, there is no poison in that bottle. What? Why, Ryanisu? Okay, it's in the glass. Remember the glass she took from the scene? Isn't it obvious? If there was poison in there, she'd be dead by now. Sometimes you're an adultery native really astounds me. But sometimes it's in need of a good staining. Until it's as dark as your uniform in the ways of the world. Oh, is that what this color is supposed to represent? Are we penalized for this?
It contains poison, but... I, the defense, refuse to change his position. You're serious. Objection! Fool, are you blind? There's no possible way that bottle could contain poison. I mean, we just saw... Miss Brett drinking the water from it. That's right, which rather complicates your argument, I think. And I believe that complication can be explained. How? How exactly? I need to think thoroughly through all the things that don't quite add up here, one by one. I'm sure the answer is in the evidence we have in the court record somewhere. It has to be. Very well. And the defense truly intends to assert this claim. Then I must ask you to support the assertion with evidence. What explains how the witness was able to consume this supposed poison while they're unscathed? It's when it enters through a wound, such as that inflicted by a blowpipe dart. It could be applied as an anesthetic. So he was already being poisoned, and then she shot him to make the poison actually go through? Is that what actually happened? Hmm. It's either that or just the glass was poisoned. Yes. Attention! No? After all, we don't speak English. The report is other gibberish. Well, just because it's in a foreign language doesn't mean it's not relevant. I'm not trying to ridicule anyone. Honest, I'm just reading Susato's son's notes. I concur. This report is too extensive to be considered entirely by the court. You will direct us to the pertinent section, counsel. Which section of the report reveals the, um... Uh, the alleged uh, answer to the riddle. Special characteristics. We've been hearing a lot about this curare poison. And it's left me curious about something. Oh, counsel? Well? Sounds as though ind indigenous hunters have been using this poison for years and years to lace the heads of the arrows they shoot at whatever prey they're hunting. That's right, and so when the hunters actually hit an animal with the poison, they they'll eat the animal afterwards, so they'll poison themselves, which means that the poison isn't effective when you ingest it. It's only effective when it goes through a wound. So what I think happened was maybe it was the burn mark. Maybe that's where it came from. Um... So we've been led to believe, yes, and the point of hunting is to catch prey to eat. Get to the point, please. But if they were to use those laced arrows, doesn't that mean there would be traces of poison left in the prey in the hunters were going to eat? Yes, good point. So surely the hunters wouldn't want to eat their prey, who would they? Because then they'd be eating poison. Good gracious, counsel, no, that would be madness. But I actually found the answer to that conundrum in this research paper here. Under special characteristics, it says this. The poison starts to work after entering the body through a wound. Through a wound, you say. 
Maybe it was the, 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 um, the, uh, when he was at the dentist. Yes, the mention of that particular detail seemed a little strange to me, though. But it all makes sense when you interpret what's written like this. When Kirar enters the body through an open wound, it has terrifying poisonous effects. However, when it enters through the body via the mouth, it has no poisonous effects whatsoever. What? Miss Brett, you offered the, this research. You know Kirar's special characteristics, and you knew that you could make a spectacle of drinking that water without any danger to yourself. You meddling little... Rapscallion. Well, Ryan Nosuke, it turns out... You're an even better lawyer than I thought you'd be. Really, me. A lawyer. All, all this poison talk is fascinating, I'm sure. But I fail to see how it possibly... So... The ill-bred little puppy has a new toy to play with, some facts he read in the book. But I'm afraid knowledge doesn't suit you, little boy. It only makes you look silly. What are you trying to say? Your schoolboyish logic has a fatal flaw. Schoolboyish? Flaw. As even your brain has managed to deduce, Curera is safe to ingest. It seems likely that its effects are neutralized by the acidic nature of the gastric su succus. Oh, yes. Well, of course. Gastric suckers, what are they? So, if this lethal poison is completely harmless when drunk, the professor wouldn't have died when he swallowed it, would he? That's right. Good gracious. That's basic science. Science that even a schoolboy should be able to understand, no? Order, order in the court, order. The logic holds. If the lady and the professor drank the same poison, they would be affected in the same way. Are you trying to suggest... Yes, this cure poison is completely irrelevant to the case on trial. That's right. Surely even a little cockroach like you could understand something as simple as that. Now I can see what a demon she really is. What is this, welling up inside me? I've never felt like this before. It's a sort of conviction to break down all the disreferencies. It's so intense, almost rage-like. And more than anything else, it's an animalistic desire to take down my prey. Objection! I don't think so, Miss Giselle Brett. How, how dare you use that tone with me? You know very well that there is no f fatal flaw here. You know exactly why, even though both you and the victim swallowed the same poison. You are alive, but Dr. Wilson is dead. Counsel, I'm sure I don't need to remind you. You must provide compelling evidence. As we now know, this poison is completely harmless when ingested. Why would Dr. Wilson alone have been killed by the curer? Examine. Okay, let's see one more time. Uh, he had a tooth out. That's a wound. I think it's this. I hope I'm right. As Miss Brett is so readily pointed out, she drank the same water as the professor. However, there was a fundamental and fatal difference between the two diners. The music's getting intense, we're getting to the answer here. A fatal difference. The toxic effects of Curera are only felt when the poison enters the body through an open wound. So for a healthy person with no injuries, drinking it is completely harmless. But... 
What if there was a wound inside the mouth of the person drinking the poisoned water? Inside? Yes, like the wound you might have. If you had just been to, to the dentist and had a tooth extracted, for example. Ah! Ah! We got it. We got her now. She's finished. Miss Brett, you've acknowledged many times in your testimony already that you were well aware of Dr. Wilson's dental appointment that day. Ah! So that's it. You used that knowledge to orchestrate this. Look at her just laughing now. Is she... Laughing? I don't like to repeat myself, but honestly, I can't resist. These childish courtrooms games and your half-baked arguments are also pure, puerile. What? What did you mean? Don't worry, little schoolboy. You'll find out soon enough. You see, when you leave vital evidence lying around, never know what might happen to it. No. I mean, it could just slip. She just destroyed evidence. She will be arrested for that. I'm afraid some crucial evidence may have just been tragically destroyed. No. The, but there's still something else. The glass she took. Remember that? The glass. It's, it should have traces of poison. Officer, what are you waiting for? Collect as much of the water from the broken bottle as possible at once. You're wasting your time. This delightful carpet under my feet was a gift from the British Empire. I assure you, it will soak up the water beautifully. You have neither technology nor the presence of mind to recover it. How could you? You won't get away with this. You can thump the bench and shout as much as you like, little boy, but I'm afraid we'll never know now, will we? If there really was poison in the bottle, or not. And let us not forget, she would be arrested at this point. We still have some very compelling evidence left intact. Isn't that right, counsel for the prosecution? Oh, of course, of course. Referring to this photographic print, I assume, dear lady. That's right. And really, looking at this photograph, it's as clear as day, isn't it? The poor professor was sitting with his back to me. So of course, the only person who could have shot him from the front is the little schoolboy. No, you killed the victim that day, using Kirer. And then, in order to frame Ryonusuke for the crime. You waited until he picked up the pistol you'd arranged for him to find on the floor before you shot the professor's dead body in the chest with your own hidden gun. Then, in the confusion that followed, all you had to do was turn the dead professor and his chair around. You see? You had every opportunity to commit this crime. What a wonderful imagination you have, young man. A hidden gun, you say? And I shot the professor's dead body, did I? Well, I'm terribly sorry, but you don't have any shred of evidence. Exactly. And as you have nothing to support your wild claims, the prosecution's stance remains unchanged. The victim, Dr. John H. Wilson, was killed by a gunshot to the chest. Delivered in cold blood by the accused, Ryan Asuke Narohodo. Ah. Hmm. This is unbelievable. How can this be happening? We've ha had her, but now, is she really going to get away with it? The way she destroyed that evidence was obscene. Ryan Asuke. Yes, we've come this far, but now, now you're the only one who can finish it. What? What do you mean? We've lost a vital piece of evidence, it's true. So if there's any clues left for us to use now, then they must be in your head. In my head? You told me before that your powers of observation were the one thing you could really depend on. Well, yes, that's true. But, but I didn't manage to notice that this woman was a foreigner with a swan on her head. So think back again now. Try to remember every last detail about the scene that day. Everything you saw, everything you felt, every color, every smell. What I saw, what I felt. Every color. Is that blood? Is Kazuma right? 
somewhere in the vibrant memory of this scene in my head. Could there be another clue to expose the identity of Dr. H. Wilson's killer? There's a clue. Actually, Kazuma, I think I might have something. Thinking back over everything I saw, I think I might have uncovered another clue. Haha, <laughs> you always have something up your sleeve, don't you, Ryan Asuke? Come on then, let's wipe the smug smile off that Englishwoman's face with some evidence. Alright, I can't wait. It's been niggling me for a while that something feels amiss in my memories that day. Whatever it is, it could be the key to arriving at the truth about all this. It's here somewhere, the clue that shows who Dr. Wilson's real killer is. I'm just gonna, um, uh, okay, here. Looks like this is blood. Take that! Inspector Hosunaga, answer me this. Wait, he was coughing up blood, right? Yes? What is it? Ugh. He's still miles away, probably thinking about that bottle being smashed. As you've said a number of times now, you strive for perfection in your investigations, don't you? Absolutely. I wonder, therefore, if perhaps you took anything else from the scene of the crime. Like, for instance, the plate of steak that you took to the victim's table that day. Wait a minute. Where are you going with this? Where are you going with this, little boy? It's just a memory that's been troubling me. What memory? I saw the scene shown in the photographic print with my own eyes that day. And I saw that on the wooden base of the plate that the steak was served on was a spattering of blood. What? Oh, really? And what of it? Wait, right. The... The, the bullet didn't go through the body. I remember that. The bullet didn't go through, so there wouldn't be blood on the other side. There wouldn't be any. No, 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 no. No, the bullet wouldn't be behind him because the, the blood... I mean, the blood wouldn't be behind him because the bullet didn't exit the body. It was probably a black powder firearm. No, that can't be the case. Take a good look at the photograph and the relative position of everything there. The plate of steak is almost directly behind the victim. If I'm supposed to have shot Dr. Wilson in the chest from the front, there's no way the blood from the victim could have ended up directly behind him. Ah. Hmm. Yes. For blood to have been made onto the plate, it implies the plate was between the victim and the shooter, which means the shooter must have been sitting opposite from the professor, as you were. Dizale Brett. I beg your pardon? This is beyond ridiculous. Fabricated nonsense. Is the court seriously expected to believe something the accused has apparently just remembered seeing? This. This could be the moment that my entire career in the police force has been leading to. Inspector, you mean? Yes, I took the plate in the interest of preserving evidence from the scene of the crime. I took it, meat and all, and I don't care if they call me a crime scene thief because of it. You did what? I took the steak that you had been eating, Miss Brett. I took the steak that the sergeant had been eating. And I did it all in the name of justice. Then we can find out for sure whether or not there's a blood stain on Miss M Miss Brett's plate. We must examine it now. Inspector. The court wishes to examine the plate from the victim's table immediately. Yes, sir. Sorry for the delay. Don't let her near the evidence again. Keep her away. Here is what you ordered, the steak. Well, what about the blood? Is there blood on it? Of course there isn't. Quickly, Inspector, the blood, man. Show the court. Of course, examine the plate at your leisure.
No, no blood. No blood anywhere. But, no, that's not impossible. I know I saw it, I'm sure of it. It was right on the table behind the professor. There was blood on the side of the plate. It would have dried up after a few days. What an unbecoming expression, little boy. You see, this is why I always say you can't trust what the Japanese tell you. I couldn't agree more in the case of the disgrace of the Empire. I believe we finally reached a conclusion this trial. Let's hope so. This let's pretend attempt at courtroom proceedings is painful to watch. But I do promise to do my best to forget all about it when it's over. There's something else here. The scary looking stake reveals the facts all too clearly. If the scary looking accused wish to examine it again, be my guest. Was the plate I saw, or thought I saw, just a figment of my imagination? No, it wasn't. This is it now. I've lost. Ryanosuke, it's not over yet. Not until the final gavel. Hmm. Never stop believing in yourself. Keep looking forward, no matter what. Believe in myself. Really. Hmm. Maybe I should at least examine the evidence for myself. Yeah, we should. As the evidence requested by the defense has not been shown to be problematic in any way, I presume any further examination of evidence in this trial will be unnecessary. No, we should look at it. Does the defense have any objection? That bloodstain was going to clinch the trial for me. Can this plate of stake reveal any other clues at all? There's something else that we're just not seeing here. Okay. I gotta clear um uh, a little bit of memory on my computer from some videos because I'm about to run out of space myself. Um, uh, cause I've been recording for two hours now on this clip. Okay. Okay, that's it. Got some more memory now. I just didn't want my recording to be cut. Okay, let's take a look at this plate now, here. Okay. What is that? What? What the? What in the world is this? I think it's a Coben coin, and the hallmark is from the Huey era, I believe. It's that- it's the- it's the- the guy's coin! What?! I mean, what's it doing in there? Wait, did you say it was a Huey Koban? Yes, and apart from the meat juices, it looks to be in good condition. I imagine it's very valuable. This isn't the first time today that there's been talk of a Huey Koban. I've heard of pearls before swine, but I've never heard of a bullion in a b boilin. And I don't think you ever will again. This is extraordinary, though. This means... Is this what the whole thing was about, stealing the coin? How did the coin get underneath there? There's another clue. Your Excellency, please wait. This plate of beef is hiding another clue. Another clue that will reveal the shocking truth. The only thing that's shocking here is your unhealthy fascination with beef steak. 
Your Excellency, I think I've made myself clear, haven't I? I will not be able to turn a blind eye to any more unnecessary procrastination in this trial. I'm sorry, Miss Brett, but we must ensure a thorough examination of the evidence. I will not give a ruling until I'm completely satisfied that all reasonable doubt has been dispelled. I see. As a newly aff affirmed ally of my country, that's still your position, is it? Thank you, Your Excellency. Counsel, for the defense, you will now clearly show the court to which you are alluding. Where precisely on this plate is the new clue to be found? Okay, wait, let's skip this. I thought I was just gonna present it here, but... Right there. Good, good gracious, that's... Ah, a Coban? What on earth? A Huey Era wanted that. Miss Brett, this is in fact the beefsteak that you ordered at the restaurant on the day in question, is it? Tell me. Why is there an old coin seemingly hidden underneath the meat? What a ridiculous question, how should I know? I've never seen before, that thing before in my life. I don't know what this is, but I want no part of it. I fail to see how this is relevant, a coin under the meat. That could simply have been a careless mistake by the chef in a moment of distraction. Don't be absurd, we're supposed to believe that this happened by accident in the kitchen? A rare way, um, a uh, Coban just happens to be hidden underneath that piece of steak? If this turns out to be irrelevant to the case... I'll rip up my ticket to Great Britain right now. He's right, it can't be a coincidence. Your Excellency. Yes, Council. A rare way, Coban just happens to be hidden underneath that piece of steak? If this turns out to be irrelevant to the case... I'll give up my lawyer job right now. By all means, don't let us stop you. No one invited you anyway. Perhaps, little boy, you should realize that it is you who is irrelevant. Even though I'm the one on trial here. The point is, it's essential that we ask the owner of this coin if he can explain what's it doing under that stake. Bring in the other witness, the owner. Yes, it's ob obvious. There's only one person it can belong to. The owner of that... Uh, The owner of that coin is... Here, Korik Kuda. Take that. Obviously, it can only be... The antique stealer and owner of Rasu Te, Kiro Kurio Korik Kuda-san. Kiri, as in Mr. Cucumber something? Honestly, these ridiculous Japanese names are quite unfavorable. Ah, yes. The old man was testified earlier, alongside the military sergeant, correct? Yes, Your Excellency. I remember him saying that he was up to something with his Coban coin when it happened, as exactly the moment the gun was fired. The gunshot interested me not. I was far too busy on the floor. Too busy on the floor? Sorry, what were you doing? Hunting for treasure. He was looking for his coin. Indeed. The Coban, my prize coin. Do you mean to tell me? No, 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 please. Why would Korakado's son's Coban be sandwiched between the victim's beefsteak and his plate? It makes no sense. Which is why I'm asking to bring Korakado's son back to the witness stand, so we can ask him. Officer, bring both witnesses that testified earlier back in here. Without a moment's delay. I can't believe we've come back around that pair again. But I have a hunch, a strong hunch, that if we chase down the real significance of this Coban, we'll find out that it's a key element in this case.
<laughs> the baby's still pulling on his mustache. What's it all about? Why haven't been called up again? Don't you realize it's dinner time for little baby Edo? Well, my son's belly's empty. He's fiercer than a pack of wolves. Exploited by the police, we were. Like miserable dogs. Forced to bear false witness. And when cast from this courtroom, myself, I became um, a ruined man in a trice. A worthless, withered antique. Nothing more I have to say. The sun has set on this Rasute shop owner's existence. Be that as it may, Korakao-san, something has come to light that requires your clarification. As far as your Rasute memory serves, have you ever seen this Koban? Oh. Yes, that's it. Did he just drop the knife in the guy's foot? The, resplend the resplendent splendiferous way treasure that my rusty bones managed to displace that fateful day. It can't be. Hmm. As I thought. Young man, enlighten this direct the decrepit old fool. Put me out of my misery. Where, where was my treasure? Where was it dropped? Oh, um, I'm not sure if it was dropped anywhere. We found your coin sandwiched between a beefsteak and its plate, soaking in the seasoned meat's juices. Sandwiched? Soaking? Seriously? Clearly, it couldn't have fallen there by accident. Which means... Somebody must have hidden it there, on purpose. Somebody concealed my Huey treasure between a slab of meat and a metal plate. Who would do such a thing, such an unconscionable thing? Excuse me, could I, could I say something? Yes, of course. Proceed, Inspector Hosanaga. I mentioned this earlier on in the trial, but I was working undercover in the restaurant in order to investigate another case. Ah, uh, yes, that's right. The secret undercover operation. La Carnival is a high-class Western cuisine restaurant. It attracts wealthy diners, including many foreigners. Recently, there's been a run of si similarly e executed thefts targeting the restaurant's rich clientele. A number of such incidents have been reported to the police bureau. Hmm. Wicked crimes indeed. We wanted to nip the case in the bud quickly, especially with so many foreigners being affected. So that's why you were sent in undercover, is it? Yes. I took on the job of waiter at the restaurant in order to flush out the criminal. It seems likely that this Koban incident is the work of the same thief. Hmm. So unbeknownst to us, there was a master thief at work in the restaurant on a regular basis. The place is already the scene of several crimes, it seems. I don't know about the master thief part. But the identity of the person who stole and hid Korakawa-san's Koban is all too clear. What? What? I think the court would like to hear the defense's view on this matter. Tell us, who is the despicable scoundrel that stole Korakawa-san and hid it underneath the stake? I'm gonna save just in case here again, but I, I think that this is gonna be the, um... I think they were partners. And they were working together. I think it's Giselle, um... Take that! Yes, it seems likely candidate for a Coben feed. No, come on, Ryunisuke. Huh? You shocked me, Kazuma. Not as much as you shocked me. No one could have approached the table unnoticed, even if you're a crazy fool. You couldn't have missed that. I'm not sure you should be calling Korakado's son a crazy old fool, Kazuma. It's you I was calling the crazy fool, ah. Maybe I'm on the wrong track here. It was the professor, then. It wasn't him either? The only person that I can think of that stole the, um, uh, the coin was the, um, uh, the soldier. It's 
not them either. I don't think it's him because he would have retrieved it. Take that. Obviously, it can only be you. Sergeant Iesa Nosa. What? How? How dare you? You, you monster. Monster. I stole the Coban, did I? I'm the master thief of La Carnival, am I? You're seriously accusing me of these crimes, cadet. But it wasn't me. It was Edo. Edo is the mastermind behind all this. What? Is that not a baby? You would push the blame for your crimes onto your own son, an incompetent little baby? It's you who's the monster, Sergeant Nosa. Ah! Well, he's having a breakdown right now. <laughs> Nippon Imperial Army, Sergeant Ie Senosa, preparing to stand down in the Imperial Court, sir. Do any of you know of the extraordinary low wages the Nippon Imperial Army pays those that it expects to keep our country safe? I understand that the temporary increase in taxation owing to the recently ended conflicts remains in place, and I have heard it's hard for low-ranking soldiers to make a living, yes. All I want is to put a hot meal on the table for my son. That's why you were stealing things at the restaurant. The place is, is heaving with money. Every three days I go there and do reconnaissance for a target. And I enjoy chomping my way through a good steak at the same time. It sounds like he doesn't bother with a knife and fork, even which is worrying believable. And your target that day was the old man and his Koban? Yes. Yes, sir. He was an easy mark. I slipped a coin into my pocket without any trouble at all. Hmm. A veritable phantom thief you are. I was all set to leave the stake. I was halfway through, devouring when it happened. The murder. Yes, when the professor was shot. I knew there was the police conducted a search and found the coin in my pocket. I'd be finished. I know too. So I hid the incriminating evidence as fast as I could, on the double. I slipped it under the stake, hoping that I'd be able to rendezvous, rendezvous with it again at a later date. Did he switch out the plates? This is ridiculous. Perhaps you could carry on with this absurd prating in your own time. Well, Miss Brett. Oh, of course, dear lady, of course. How rude of us. I'm quite sure there's no need to detain you any longer at all. Don't let her go. Many esteemed gentlemen, please be excused, Your Excellency. Indeed. The theft of the Coven was clearly perpetrated by this, uh, baby-saddled sergeant. It would certainly appear to be unrelated to Dr. Wilson's murder. Of course it is. Hiding a coin under a lump of meat? The sheer nonsense of such an idea astounds me. Nonsense, is it? Uh, um, well, oof. And as picking up your steak and biting into it without using a knife and fork is beyond nonsense, it's pure madness. Very well. Now all questions concerning this witness testimony have been answered. I see no further just justification for detaining her. Miss Brett, you are free to leave. No, don't let her leave. Thank you, Your Excellency. Good luck, everyone. And good day. Don't let her leave. What's the matter with you? He has that face. Oh no, it's just... Something about Miss Brett's parting words there got me thinking. I can't quite work out what exactly, but something she said jarred with me. 
I feel like there was a contradiction in there somewhere. Something didn't quite add up. If that's the case, don't just stand there thinking. Make your voice heard. Sorry? You can think later. But if you don't call out now, it'll be too late. The trial will be over. Hold it! Wait, Miss Brett. What is it now? I'm afraid, just one last time. There's something I'd like to ask you. I'd like to, you to explain the contradiction in your parting words from just a few moments ago. What are you talking about? What contradiction? Objection! Something about the stake. What new student nonsense is this? Well, what parting words are you talking about, Ryonusuke? Hiding a coin under a lump of meat? The sheer nonsense of such an idea astounds me. And as for picking up your steak and biting into it without using a knife and fork, it's beyond nonsense. It's pure madness. Yes, I'm right. What she said there exposed an undeniable contradiction. I'm going to need to see evidence, Council. If Miss Brett's words truly are contradictory, where is the evidence to prove it? Okay, let's just save here because we gotta, um... Just in case. We're getting to the bottom of this now. Let's look at the history. Hiding a coin under a lump of meat. The sheer nonsense of such an idea astounds me. And as for picking up your steak and biting into it uh, use, uh, without using a knife and fork, it's beyond nonsense. It's pure madness. something here, guys. This is the end. I'm onto something here now. Looks like the knife is used. I not seeing here something I gotta think for a moment I'm something I'm not seeing here it's pure madness okay that's not it um As for picking up your steak and biting into it without using a knife and fork, what could that be implying? I'm confused. Hiding a coin under a lump of meat. The sheer nonsense of an idea astounds me. It's something, something here. I'm just not seeing it. Probably people watching the video are probably seeing it. Um.
Expose the contradiction. Hiding a coin under a lump of meat. Wouldn't it be that she would see the coin if she was eating the steak? Okay, we're gonna we're gonna try this. I'm okay. I'm Take that! the photographic print of the scene taken immediately after the incident occurred. The knife and the fork. What's interesting is the plate of steak that you can see on the victim's table. Oh wait, what about it here? Wait a second. Is it? Wait, wait, wait. Not flipped that way, but wait. Wait, is it flipped? Let me see. I can't tell if it's flipped or not. I think it might have been flipped. might have been flipped. Now you're just spilling, uh, splitting hairs. Not true. Doesn't something about this steak strike you as very unnatural? Unnatural. What on earth do you mean? It's extremely obvious. I'm talking about the shape of the edge where it's been eaten. I see you've noticed it too, Miss Brett. The shape at where it's been eaten? Yeah, wait, that's right, um... How did I miss this? If the steak was actually used with a knife, it would have been- the edges would have been smooth. It wouldn't have looked like this. Like, it would have been smoothed edges. How could I not see this? It looks like- was she eating it without a knife and fork? Just a few moments ago, Miss Brett claimed, No Englishman could ever contemplate picking up a steak and biting into it without using a knife and fork. Of course she did. She's a refined English woman herself. Then take a good look at the steak. In particular, the edge where it's been eaten. There's no smooth cuts with a knife. As you can see, there are clearly defined barbaric teeth marks there. It looks like Miss Brett has realized something. So, 
if the witness as she claims wouldn't contemplate eating anything without using a knife and fork, there shouldn't be teeth marks in the steak at all. Attention! But, what is your actual point? Perhaps the delightful Miss Brett was ravenously hungry. Oh, um, whatever you say, dear lady. As I said, I really must be leaving now. No, you don't get to leave! Of course, of course, this will all be over in the blink of an eye. Rest assured, I'm about to put this rookie in his place. Just leave everything to... I've heard enough, you irritating little spectacled samurai relic. Wow. Oh, of course, of course. Dear lady, wow, this prosecutor. What's the matter, Miss Brett? Have we ruffled your feathers? Clearly, the witness knows what this means. She's realized the catastrophic implications the teeth marks and the stake have for her. Ryan Asuke, do you know where you're going with this? Yes. Now at last, it's all come together. The mysterious teeth marks in a stake that had allegedly been eaten with cutlery. The reason why the blood stain I know I saw somehow seems to have disappeared. It's because it was sw was it swapped out? And most importantly, the evidence that proves once and for all who shot Dr. Wilson that day. I accept that these teeth marks in the stake are a little unnatural, as you put it, counsel. But what exactly are you suggesting that tells us? Everything, Your Excellency. Everything? Yes, I believe that these barbaric teeth marks in the stake here amount to conclusive evidence in this case. Evidence that will prove beyond any doubt who shot Dr. Wilson. Conclusive evidence. How many times have I heard that today? You wouldn't know the meaning of the phrase, typical Japanese empty frets. How can you be so sure? Oh, it's quite simple. If you really had such conclusive evidence, you would have presented it to the court long ago. Actually, the evidence I'm talking about hasn't been brought before the court yet. Hasn't been? What? But just because it hasn't been shown yet, doesn't mean that the evidence does not exist. Yup. This is absurd. This trial has run several hours already, and you say there's evidence yet to be brought forward? There can't be. I don't believe you, you have it. I don't, but there is someone who does have it. Someone in this very courtroom. And if that person is willing to submit this piece of evidence I'm referring to, it will solve every remaining mystery about this case. Very well. I have a feeling that this will be my last request of the defense in the trial. Who possesses the conclusive evidence that will reveal the truth about this whole affair? We're gonna save just in case. I think it's a detective. I think he gave us the wrong plate. I'm trying to think right now. The sergeant swapped out the plates. The detective would have the... I think it's a detective. Take that. The answer is obvious. It's Inspector Hosanaga. What? I have it? Yes. You think I've been withholding conclusive evidence? That's ridiculous. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that. Everyone's attention has been focused on this stake. With the teeth marks. Yes? Now, earlier this afternoon, Sergeant Nosa told the court the following. I'd enjoy chomping my way through a good stake. And as well as admitting to stealing Koba korakaru sans coin, he told us he slipped it under the stake. You watch it, cadet. I'm a superior officer. Sergeant Nosa, could you please confirm something for me? Was the stake that you put the coin under, in fact, your own stake? Teen Shun. Affirmative, of course. I might be a soldier in the Imperial Nippon Army, but still. I'm not brave enough to ask a foreign gentle lady if she might be manhandling her meal to hide something in it. In other words, the stake that the detective submitted as evidence earlier today 
was in fact Sergeant Noza's meal. Yep. Attention! But that makes no sense. That plate was taken from the victim's table. Objection. Yet the gentlewoman doesn't take bites out of her steak. Nor did she have any opportunity to steal the coin. Of course I didn't steal it. The even suggestive thing would be... A front to the entire British Empire. Well then, how do you explain this paradox? Exactly. Surely you're not going to suggest... That the sergeant switched the two stakes over. You did switch the plates? Well, after it happened, the, um... When I saw the civilian had been murdered right in front of my eyes like that, I panicked. As I said, I immediately lifted my stake and hid the coin underneath it. But then when the waiter announced he was undercover policeman, I thought I'd had it. If he decided to investigate my slab of meat, there, that'd be it. I began into trouble. So when the cadet uh, here was arrested and taken off to the kitchen, I seized my chance. With military precision and timing, I switched my stake with the one on the foreign lady's table. What? You can't have. I never saw you do such a thing. It was called Operation Lightning Bolt. There was no time for strategic planning. It was do or die, I tell you. So yes, I did what had to be done. Unbelievable. Now let's bring in the other plate. However, fear not, prosecutor's son. What now? I swear on the brass buttons of my uniform. That is all I did, sir. All you did? That's plenty, Sergeant. Yes. So, if Sergeant Nosa switched the plates over... It means he took Miss Brett's steak and the plate it was on back to his own table. Yes, that follows. Inspector Hosunaga. Yes. Earlier in this trial, you told the court this. You said that you had not only taken Miss Brett's steak after the incident, but also the sergeant's. That to preserve evidence, you had to take them both. Ah. That's correct. Then please present it to the court now. The plate that was actually on the victim's table at the precise moment he was shot. Got you. What can that possibly tell us now? I mean, a cold slab of tough meat? I can't have the slice bearing on the case. And now this is this is the uh, the pursuit theme when you're getting to the end. So I'm, I'm assuming that we're going to get her right now. This is it. I love this music that kicks in. Objection! No, you're not wriggling uh, your way out of this time, lady. I beg your pardon. Here it comes. Surely you're not for that forgetful. Surely you remember the reason why the steak pan promises to provide such a prob problem uh, for you, not? You're the one who decided it was a problem, not me. The reason the defense asked to see the plate was to confirm something that the defendant remembers seeing. Things he remembers. I'm quite sure of what I saw, Miss Brett. Blood on the plate. On the side of the plate that was on the table directly behind Dr. Wilson. There was clear sp uh, spattering of blood from the gunshot wound to the victim's chest. I believe the defendant's memory serves him well. And now, we have the evidence to prove it. Let's not prolong this any further, Inspector. You will show the evidence to the court. Present the beef steak and, and plate that was originally on the victim's table at the time of the incident. Yes, sir. Sorry for keeping you. Look at that blood. Here is the other steak in its plate. Please feel free to examine it. The blood stain. It's clearly visible. Look. Yes. Now this makes everything clear. The blood you can see on the, each on the side of the plate shows that the moment the victim was shot, 
facing the table with his back to me. In other words, it's impossible for Naruhado's son to have shot the victim. It can't be. In fact, there's only one person who could have possibly shot Dr. Wilson from the front. I'm sure everyone knows by now who that person is. Uh. That's right, Miss Giselle Brett. It's you. Did the goose just die? Outdone by a Japanese me? By a Japanese schoolboy? No, no, no. Where is she going? Well, this is definitely an interesting breakdown. What? What's with all the birds? <laughs> They're even on the judge's desk. Please excuse my little outburst. I briefly lost my composure. Most unbecoming behavior for an English gentlewoman. Forgive me. Well, Miss Brett, I think it's time you told the court what actually happened that day. The truth. This time. Gladly, Your Excellency. It was I who took the professor's life, using Curare. As you surmise, I chose that particular day for one very important reason. The professor had a dental appointment for the extraction of one of his teeth in the morning. But why? Why did she kill him? So you plan to kill the professor, knowing that no trace of poison will be found in his water. Because Curare is unheard of here in Japan. Yes. Of course, I never intended to remain at the restaurant for as long as I did. I only needed to see the professor take one tiny sip of the water, and it would be all over. I would place the steak I had ordered in front of him to make it appear as though he had been dining alone, and leave immediately. However, before any of that happened, there was an unexpected visitor at the professor's table. That would be me, I suppose. Yes, you. Who else? So it's a traveling matter, but the fact that you decided to come over to greet the professor meant that I had lost my chance to slip away unnoticed. In due course, the professor took a sip of his water and was paralyzed. I made sure he was sitting in his chair such that he wouldn't fall. There was no going back at that point, so I con concoded a plan on the spur of the moment. A plan to pin Dr. Wilson's murder on this innocent man. I happen to know that the professor was always always carried a gun. I decided to use that fact to my advantage. I had the bottle of Curare in my handbag. And my own pistol concealed under my skirt. Under your skirt? So I was right, there was two guns. Yes. And then I finished my coffee and got up to leave. That's when I noticed the professor's gun, which you had presumably placed on the floor. Placed where you were sure that I would not no that I would notice it. And everything went under according to plan. You noticed the gun as I'd intended. And then, just as you'd bent down to pick it up. Bang. That's when you shot the professor with your own gun. Even though at that point, he was already dead. Naturally, the gunshot caused a commotion at which the point the waiter appeared. Obviously, I assumed Naruhoto's son was a culprit and apprehended him. 
I took I took him to the pantry that adjo adjoins the kitchen and locked him inside. That's when I took the opportunity to turn the professor in his chair around. Because of course, you needed to make it look like the defendant had shot Dr. Wilson from where he picked up the gun. But now why? So there you have it. That is the entirety of my misdemeanor. Misdemeanor? It's a murder. It's a, it's a felony. Your Excellency. Yes. I wonder. Might I speak with you in private later? I shall call on you. Thank you. Good day to everyone. I hope you can forgive me, Naruhoto-san. She didn't explain her motive at all, though. Why she did it. Motive is the reason why you do it. It would seem this trial has finally run its course. I presume the prosecution is in agreement. This can't be. Takatuchi, uh, Suchi, Auchi does not lose. Not at the likes to this rookie student. You better start getting used to tough opposition. Erg. Ryo Nusuke Naruhodo. Yes? This insult to the Auchi family name will never be forgotten. You're the one who tried to prosecute him for a crime he didn't commit. It's your own fault. You've become conceited with age, counsel. But the old have to stand aside and make way for the new. It's the way of the world. May never forget that. Did he just cut off his hat? Or no, his hair. A thousand millennia may pass, and still, Aochi clan will never measure up to the Naruhoto clan. This trial in the Supreme Court of Japan will, I believe, go down in history as the start of a new chapter in our country's judicial system. Despite being summoned as the accused, you, Raya Nisuke Naruhoto, presented an excellent case. Thank you, Your Excellency. The use of evidence and deduction to unravel the truth is a modern uh, mytholo myth methodology. After all, it has only been a few short decades since our country opened its doors to the wider world. But the Western ideas of science are rapidly gaining acceptance here. I feel sure that science will soon bring new methods of investigation and new procedures of justice. A new future of law awaits, but what it will look like I cannot begin to imagine. That is for the young to pursue. Kazuma Asoji. Yes. After this trial, you are set to embark on a jury of discovery to the illustrious British Empire. Learn all you can, absorb everything of the wider world that you are able to. And do not forget to fulfill the mission imposed upon you. I understand, Your Excellency. What was that about? Why did you look so grave all of a sudden? Ah, never mind. As for you, Ryan Asuke Narahodo. Oh, yes? In you, I sense, how can I put it, unusual potential. I very much look forward to seeing how you carry that onwards. Thank you, Your Excellency. It is time to deliver the final verdict. I hereby find the defendant, Ryosuke Naruhoto. Not guilty. We did it! We did it, we beat her. This court is now adjourned. I can't believe it. I can't believe what's happened. I made it. I defended myself and made it through that horrendous trial. Ryan Asuke, you finally pulled it off. Congratulations. Well, I couldn't have done it without you. 
Thank you, Kazuma. No, no, no. It was a pleasure to watch you at work. So you owe me an extra large uh, sukiyaki from the place on Yumei University Street. Don't forget. Good afternoon. All your hard work has certainly paid off. Congratulations to both of you for provi proving Naruhoto-san's innocence. Ah, our trusty judicial assistant. You worked hard for that result, too, you know. Oh no, I didn't do anything. Thank you so much. If we hadn't had that research paper report of Miss Brett's, I don't know how things would have turned out. Your kind words should really be, uh, for my father. I was simply doing as he asked. It was his idea for me to go to university and investigate. Your father? Ah, uh, yes, of course. Professor Mikotoba. Forgive me for intruding on court proceedings, Your Excellency. Susato Mikotoba, judicial assistant to the defense. Speaking of Mikotoba... Ah, uh, there you are. I believe congratulations are in order. Naruhodo, you did an excellent job. Thank you, Professor. Oh no, it is I who should be thanking you. After all, your efforts expose a true criminal that took the life of my good friend. Good friend? Oh yes, you mentioned that before. It was you who actually invited Dr. Wilson to Yumei University, wasn't it? Yes, that's right. Professor Mikotoba studied overseas himself. He went to study forensic medicine in Great Britain. Presumably, that's when you met Dr. Wilson. Exactly. In those days, we worked together in the same hospital. Oh, you worked together? I never heard you mention that before. Well, it was a long time ago now. Besides... It's your turn, Asoji. Great Britain is a magnificent country. It leads the world. In science, medicine, engineering, culture, and of course, in law. Watch and learn, my boy. See what's happening in the world's largest melting pot. I will... I, I'll learn all that I can. I swear on the spirit of the Soji clan. You're not taking that sword to Great Britain, are you? Of course I am. A Japanese man's katana is his soul. That blade shows me where I need to go. And cuts down anything that's in my way. Yes, I've definitely seen how sharp it is already with my own eyes. That reminds me, what's happened to that woman? To Jezail Bread, I mean? After all, she's guilty of murder. Ah yes, her. It's not easy to tell you this, but... What do you mean? Surely she's gonna face trial herself now, she's the true culprit after all. She will be leaving Japan in the very near future. For Shanghai- WHAT?! She committed murder! That's in China. Giselle Brett will not appear in court again in this country. I'm certain of that. What? But why not? It's a matter of consular jurisdiction. Inspector Hosonaga. It was hard-fought battle in the courtroom today. Very impressive to watch. I must congratulate. But what's all this about consular jurisdiction? We cannot try this particular foreigner for her crimes here in Japan. What? We can't try her? But then who? Who's going to bring her to justice? A British consular court will hear her case somewhere far away, where her voices can be heard. Uh, can't be heard. So that's the um, uh, the British court in uh, in Shanghai because Britain had a lot of influence in China around this time. But why a consular court? Professor, I simply don't understand. I thought consular courts were a thing of the past now that we've signed a friendship treaty. Yes, in normal circumstances, you're right. Then, as long as this is not a serious incident of a highly political nature to our respective governments, they can't invoke a consular court just like this, oh. Can't they? Yes, she's a student, but it doesn't justify our governments making a secret agreement about her fate, does it? Something strange is going on. So Miss Brett can't be held accountable for her actions here in Japan. I'm afraid that for the young student... Today's trial was nothing more than a game all along. There was never any danger or... Or Kamiyu uh, pens for her. I don't believe it. 
The British government's foreign affairs ministry has demanded that we hand over custody of Miss Brett. They're obviously taking this case to a foreign student committing murder very seriously. Wow. But it's all going to change from now on. We can make it change. This is a time of great turmoil. This new era is heralded by the start of the 20th century. One day, I have no doubt, this woman will receive the judgment she deserves. Yes, change is coming. And we are the ones driving it. Well, I think that's enough seriousness for now. That's the happy music that plays, um... So you know you come to the conclusion of the case, but Professor... You're right. This is no time for gloomy faces. We should be celebrating Ryan Osuke's not guilty verdict. Let's start having some fun. In that case, might I suggest La Carnival? Huh. <laughs> As the head waiter, I should be delighted to provide you with an ample food and drink. <laughs> yeah, the place of the murder. Um, you're a detective, Hosanaga-san, aren't you? Let's not worry about the details for now. To La Carnival, will you accompany us, Professor? Of course, La Carnival's food is second to none. I shall go and attend to the paperwork for Naruhoto san's release. Oh yes, thank you. So Giselle Brett won't be tried here. I suppose that means I'll never know. I'll never find out why she killed Dr. Wilson. The motive was, was this. She's probably going to come back in a later case, that's what I think. Kazuma. Yes, Ryanosuke. I just wanted to say thanks again. That's all. You really saved my skin today. I didn't do a thing. You were the lawyer in there, weren't you? That defense was all your own work. Your skills made a difference, though. One day, I bet you'll be the best lawyer in the world. Hmm, I'm not so sure about that. To be honest, something keeps occurring to me over and over during that trial. I couldn't help thinking that maybe you're the one destined to become a great lawyer, not me. What? Come on, don't be serious. Uh, if I helped you today, it was only right at the very start of the trial. But you have a natural talent for it. For being a defense lawyer, I mean. Oh no, not me. All these tense verbal combat, I never want to go through all that ever again. I just, I just did what you told me to do, that's all. Because I knew I could trust you. That's the point. Sorry? What do you mean? That's the point. You're supposed to have trust in your client. That's a saying in Ace Attorney. Listen, Ryan Asuke. Did you know what the most crucial weapon is that any lawyer needs in order to win? Um, knowledge of the law? No. The ability to believe. To believe? To believe what? A defense lawyer has to fight for his clients. He has to believe in them at all times. Like you believed in me when I said I didn't do it. I'm human, just like you. I don't have some superhuman ability to know the truth. But you have the ability to make a choice about what to believe and to stick to it when you're defending someone. Sometimes in the courtroom, you can really be backed into a corner. But being able to ref uh, remain faithful to what you choose to believe in, even then, well, that's not something that anyone can do. It takes a special kind of person. Hmm. Believing in your client. Just look at today's trial. I'm a student lawyer with precious little re real experience, but you never stop believing in me. Well, I... You face seemingly hopeless situations time and again, but you never stop looking for the truth. And in the end, you found it. Through your own efforts, and because you never stopped believing in me. Thanks, Kazuma. There's something I want to ask you, actually, Ryan Asuke. Well, it's a favor, really. Something very important to me. It sounds serious. What is... Ah, you're still here, are you? Oh, Inspector Hosonaga. I've arranged some rickshaws for us. Let's go. Thank you. We'll be right there. Let's pick up this conversation again later. We should be celebrating right now. Your first court victory. And your st uh, study at Great Britain, don't forget. Ah, yes. That too. So my very first trial came to an end. Kazuma. Professor Mikotoba. 
Susatu-san, who acted as my assistant. Inspector Hosanaga, who didn't really play much of a part, but still. It was because of the help and support of all these people that I managed to get through that trial. But more, most, more importantly, Kazuma hadn't yet managed to ask his favor of me. Little did I realize just how much it would change my life. Wonder what that favor is. The end. So that's the first case. There's nine more cases, but man, that was long for this, the first case. So, um, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I had a lot of fun with that. Uh, save current progress, yes. Definitely gonna save. Um, I had a lot of fun with that. I did, I did enjoy that. Um, it was a very long case, but it was a good one. Um, uh, so thank you guys for watching. If you guys enjoyed this, um, uh, do drop a like on this if you guys enjoyed this, and I'll have the next case for you guys as soon as I can. Thank you guys for watching. Take care, everyone.